Being efficient in Webflow can help you save hours of work. Today, we're gonna to go over three super critical tips that will help you build websites faster by being way more efficient. Let's get into it. So the first one is gonna be keyboard shortcuts. Now, keyboard shortcuts help us build a lot faster by simply adding these quick shortcuts that can help us add in new elements, maybe delete something, maybe change something the way it looks. So let's get into it. The first one is gonna be Command or Control plus K. So Command K, brings up this tab. And when we bring up this tab, we can then type in the name of any element or any object or class that we already have inside of the project. So for example, I'm gonna type in div here, and we can see that we have two separate things here. So we've got the div block or this layout here that is the Webflow default layout that they give us. One thing that we can also notice here is that we've got elements, components, layouts, pages, and collections. So if I just go ahead and type in a letter T, for example, we'll get a lot more results here. So we see elements, we can filter by those. We've got text link, text block, text area, tabs, all these different things. We've got components as well. So we've got pop-up components, we've got layouts. These are, again, the, the default Webflow ones. We've got pages as well, style guide, and that will have the letter T in it. And then also if we do have CMS collections that will come up as well. So the way that you can kind of filter this is if you click on this little action button here, this panel comes up and then you can start to change maybe what you want to do with this command K situation. So either you have the ability to add an element, add a component. So you can kind of change the way that this works just by filtering the different, the different components here. So if I wanted to go ahead and remove element, now I can add in div blocks, for example. I don't know why you would want to do that, but that's definitely an option. Uh, the more logical one here would be to maybe reduce the, the, the layouts. So maybe I don't want to always see all the different Webflow layouts coming up when we're typing something in, but you know, for now, we'll just leave it in. We can also add assets and select on page elements. So if I already have a layout here, like for example, I'm just gonna add in one of the default Webflow ones. So for example, I'm just gonna drag that in. And if I go Command or Control K, we can go ahead, we can see that the select on page element is clicked on. So if I go and it says hero heading right, okay? So I'm just gonna click on the body. So we're not, we're not selecting it anymore. And I'm gonna go hero heading Hero heading right. We can see that that right there is already, we click that and it selects the layer itself. It doesn't bring in a new one. It doesn't do any of that. We're just selecting it that and it's already in the page. So this is a very, very efficient way to go ahead and click around and jump through the project without having to go through the, the navigator, go through the layers panel, you know, click this, that. So we can just go, 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 jump through everything. And this is also a very fast way to just add in new sections and just build layouts so if we check out the i'm just going to attach this to the left here so we can see what i'm doing but, but we've got the section here then we've got a div so if i wanted to add another div just command k type in div maybe i want to add an image into this one maybe i want to add a heading so we can see that with this command k we can start to just build a layout super super quickly just like that you know and maybe we do max width of 80 rem something like that or maybe like 40% just for this example. So we can see that we can start to build in a, a layout super, super fast. And the next shortcut is actually great that we have this layout built already because it's gonna be command enter. So command enter is gonna pop up the style selector or the class adder or deleter. So we've got the, the div blocks, right? We're selecting the, the class or the layer that we want. So we're gonna start out with a section here. We can go command enter, we can delete that class so it'll remove all of the styling that we've added to it. So maybe we don't wanna do that. And we wanna just go ahead and duplicate that. So we can call this maybe our hero section or something. We can go on to this and we have the text, right? So maybe we do command enter here and we can see that we go directly into the class typing situation. And now we can type in maybe content dash wrapper, something like that. And now we're also gonna use the arrow keys and we're gonna use the right arrow key to jump onto the sibling of that div. And if we want to jump into the child element of that div, it's going to be the down arrow. And then to the parent is going to be the up arrow. So this is a very quick and easy way to navigate through the through the layer panel here. We can just go ahead and use the arrow keys. So for this one, I'm just going to type in command enter again. And maybe we can go and say graphic dash wrapper, something like that. I'm going to go in again, and then we can name this graphic. So Using those three keyboard shortcuts, it's super, super fast, but that's gonna lead us to the last keyboard shortcut, which is gonna be using the number keys, one, two, three, and four, to dive into the different breakpoints. So here we've got 
Number one is gonna be the default desktop breakpoint. Number two is gonna be the iPad. Number three, horizontal mobile. And four is gonna be the mobile. And we can see that this is extremely useful if we are, for example, building a lot of layouts really fast and we need to change maybe how it looks on one and then we need to jump to the other and then jump to the other. And this is a fast way of just moving up and down. So if I wanna go ahead and change it for mobile, I go ahead, click on the selection, go 100%. And now go back into one, and I want this to be 60%. Now go back into three, go ahead into three. Oh, I messed that up. Just like that. Go back into three, and I want this to be 70. You know, whatever the case may be, it's a fast way of jumping up and down. Just make sure that you click select before you hit the, another number. Now, another super important efficiency rule in Webflow is gonna be using symbols. Now, here I have this layout that we just built out, but I'm gonna go ahead and modify it really quickly. I'm gonna get rid of here using all the shortcuts that we just learned. I'm gonna get rid of all the styling there, and we're just gonna create a simple class here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do something like that, and then CMS title blog, something like that, right? So here I've got this layout here, and it, if I wanted to have this, ignore the fact that it's a section for now, but if I wanted to have this be a repeatable design that I can use over and over and over, just in terms of layout, in terms of structure, colors, things like that, all I have to do is go ahead and click Shift A, and that'll create a new component or symbol as they used to be called. So we go ahead and create a new component and I'm just gonna call it maybe CMS card. So now we have this card and we get a few different options here. So we can style this card. So the background, for example, can be this light gray, something like that. And in terms of styling, it's not the best styling for this scenario, but let's go ahead and add in a grid. So I'm gonna go up to the body using our shortcut there, Command K, and I'm just gonna add in a quick grid. Now I'm gonna change the columns to be three columns. Gonna get rid of that last row there. And we can just move this card to be inside of the grid. So now we have a situation where this grid can either be one of two things. We can either repeat the card multiple times over, so we have that component already done, that symbol, we can repeat it multiple times, or we can go through the process of doing div, go ahead and add an image, go ahead and add a heading, and just repeating that process over and over. So you can see that using these components, these symbols, it's gonna be much faster to replicate a design over and over. And if you have already used Figma and you're using components in Figma, it's the same exact thing. So you can kind of get the idea there. So we can go ahead and copy this, paste into the grid three times or twice, and we see that we have this layout. So to go ahead and edit the components, we just go into the actual parent element, and then we can start to play around with it. And you can see that it will change in the the settings for the rest of them just because they are the exact same component. Now let's go ahead and make this not horrid to look at. Maybe we can add a nice little, little thing right there, just like that. So we can see that we're starting to build out this very simple component layout. Now lastly is gonna be honestly the most important one out of all three of these, it's gonna be having a proper style guide from the beginning. Now I've been designing this entire thing on the Flux style guide. Now this is a template or a clonable that you guys can download, so the link is gonna be in the description for you, but having a style guide is gonna be super, super critical when you are creating these designs. So having a style guide can help you when you are already diving into a big project and you have so many, so many different pages that it's super important to get your H1s, your H2s, all your, your HTML settings. It's super critical to get all of your HTML settings to be consistent throughout every single page. And here we have a another example where we want the primary color to be always the same one throughout everything. And we have the design here, we have the color here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the pencil here. I'm gonna change that a little bit to purple, match flux a little bit more. Go ahead and do the same thing for the secondary, just a little bit more purple. Okay, save, done, and that's it. So now we see that the main button automatically changes color because the main primary button or the main primary color was decided by this color section here. So we can go ahead and start to play around with that. Another thing that we can do is gonna be go into the body here, click on body all pages, and that's how we can change all of the text of everything that we're gonna add from this point on. So for example, I'm just gonna add in maybe EXO as this example, and I'm gonna go back into our home. And we can see that all of the, the design that we've already created using these proper heading one, heading two, heading threes, we can see that all the designs have already 
taken in that exo font or the exo typography. Now, another thing that we can do is we can change maybe the width, the, the bold, the, the size of it. You know, we can change the, these different parameters, but overall having one font, having the, the exact same color that you want is gonna be super, super critical. So for example, this button primary here, we can go ahead and type in button because that is the class name that we had in the style guide. So we can see that we can start to build this picture of maybe flux design system or whatever it's gonna be in this case. And we can do the same thing here. Instead of the, the color here, we can go ahead and click on the flux color. So maybe this light purple here. And now we can see that we can start to build in more of a brand system just by using this very simple style guide that you guys can use and find in the description. So if you guys enjoyed those three efficiency tips, make sure you guys check out the Webflow course. The link is in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.